tonight from St. Louis. The Red Sox are back in interleague play for a quick two game series against the Cardinals. Feels like summertime here as the Sox try to get on a roll. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us tonight in St. Louis. I'm Dave O'Brien. My partner, Red Sox Hall of Famer, Jerry Remy. Garrett Austin joining us in just a couple of moments. And, Jerry, usually when you talk about a team getting on a roll, it begins with starting pitching. For the Red Sox, that has to be the case. You're exactly right. You know, the top three guys in the Red Sox rotation are certainly doing their job. And, you know, by the top three, I mean Chris Sale, of course, Rick Porcello, and Rodriguez, who is pitching tonight. And when you look at their numbers, they're all very respectable. Porcello, actually two and five, but could have more wins. He hasn't had a lot of run support so far this season but when he gets to the back end the fourth and fifth guys that's where the problem has been for the Red Sox Pomerantz we find out today is going to be okay to make his next start so I guess that is good news for the Red Sox we think he's healthy we'll see we'll find out when he does make the start and then Velasquez they're going to call up in the minor leagues to also become out of this pilot's rotation but that's where it does start setting the tone on the mound and hopefully Rodriguez can set the tone tonight against a very good St. Louis ball club for the whole road trip and that you know that can happen in one one game. If you get on a good roll the first game, you can run through a few good ones to the road trip. That's a good Cardinal team, of course. They are in first place in their division in the National League. We'll see how Erod fares against them tonight. And when we come back to St. Louis, Garen has more on the gateway to the West as the Red Sox prepare for game one here at Bush Stadium in just a moment. West the arch. Now, of course, this is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Missouri, and they actually broke ground on it in 1959. They built it as a way to really draw more people to this waterfront area, and it's also a memorial to President Thomas Jefferson, who championed the Louisiana Purchase and sent Lewis and Clark on their expedition westward. It is made of steel and concrete. It's 630 feet, and it's 63 stories high. And yes, you can take a tram to the top, and on a clear day, you can see for about 30 miles. Now, currently, there it's undergoing a ton of construction. They're really enhancing the visitor center and they're making a museum to really enhance the experience when you come and visit. Coming up, Jerry has a exclusive one on one with Tim McCarver.
been with Tim McCarver, and of course, Tim, we have a lot of lot I like to talk about today. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, and so obviously, obviously, your playing career, your broadcasting career, but let's start with your playing career. I mean, a teenager coming into the big leagues, while most of us are going to the prom, you're playing in the big leagues. I mean, what does that feel like? Well, little did I know, I signed with the Cardinals uh, 10 days after high school graduation. Then went to Keokuk, Iowa, class D ball in those days. Yeah. It was D we had 24 farm teams with the Cardinals in, in 1959. So there was a there was a lot of room for you. Um, and and happened to have a good year at, at Keokuk, then went to Rochester, continued to offensively. And then I was called up in, in, um, in September of that year with, a, with an outfielder catcher by the name of Gene Green. And my first game in uniform in the major leagues, even though I'd worked out with them after, you know, on my way to, right. to Waterloo, Iowa, where Brent Musburger was a home plate umpire. A home plate umpire? The home plate umpire, my very first game. I had no idea that. Keokuk Cardinals and the Waterloo, whoever they were. Uh, Galen Sisko was the pitcher and yeah. Brent Musburger was behind the plate. Did you get into it with him? But, no, I <laughs> mean, uh, you know, but we've talked about it about a thousand times since then. Um, but anyway, my first game in uniform was in Milwaukee, and I had a speech impediment when I was a kid, and uh, things had to flow. Like, like the Cardinals had a, in 1954, grew up in Memphis, 1954, uh, the Cardinals had uh, Rip Rapulski and Jabo Jablonski playing, and the names rolled off my tongue. And another guy whose name rolled off my tongue, and I couldn't pronounce a lot of names, was Henry Aaron. And so that night in Milwaukee, Henry's batting like his third time up, and I'm in uniform and looking around, not a clue what I'm doing, what I'm doing here. I'm still 17 right. years old. And uh, guess what I did? Come on, Hank. Uh, Come on, Hank. And then I tried to suck it back in, and Alex Grammas, the shortstop, came over to me, and he said, Timmy, up here, we root for our guys. Yeah. I don't know where you'd yeah, be playing. Exactly. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So that was my uh, embarrassing moment to start my career. And the next day, I started against the Cubs and Glenn Hobby, got my first base hit against Hobby. And I think I, I went four for 24 that, uh, that September. It was a big, big time in my life, yeah. really, to play for the Cardinals. Well, you know, I wanted to, I want to ask you, 17 years old, I mean, how were you treated in those days by the veteran players? I mean, you know, in today's game, it seems like they take in the, the younger players much more than they did in, in past years. Yes. And was it very difficult for you as, as a teenager to come in with these veteran players? And how did they treat you? It's a good question and one I've thought about a lot. Um, the, the, my first road trip, I showed up and I had a plaid sport coat and like gray pants and this loud yellow shirt and these shoes that I didn't know how to dress, didn't know how to, I mean, you know, again, right. blame it on being 17. And um, so Bob Neiman, an outfielder, Burley Bob Neiman, nickname for me was Bush. And I thought, hey, somebody calls you Bush, that's a compliment. It was anything but accomplishment, <laughs> a compliment, as you know. And, uh, but I thought, man, this is great. I'm in the big leagues, I called my mom, said, hey, I've got a nickname up here. She said, what is it? Bush. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. They really got a nickname for you, right? Maybe I was named after the, the team the ownership. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Anheuser, but it wasn't that. No. Wasn't as that. you know. No. But anyway, uh, the players, you know, there was a great guy who's the number one catcher, and his name was Hal Smith. There were two Hal Smiths in the big leagues. Both were catchers, one for the Pirates, one for the Cardinals. And he was the nicest guy and couldn't have been nicer to me. And, uh, they had fun with me, and yeah. a lot of times at my expense, but who cares? Right. I mean, I'd rather be noticed that way by older players than, uh, than just ignored. Right. And I was anything but ignored. Right. Well, you know, you, you, you caught, I mean, some of the greatest pitches that ever pitched in this game, and uh, I, I'm curious about your top three. I, I think I know your top two. It's I, pretty easy. It's pretty easy, the top two. But give me the top three. A guy who made a, a, a lasting impact on me was Larry Jackson, a right-handed pitcher that pitched for the Cardinals for a long time. 
uh, ultimately became the lieutenant government in Idaho, governor in Idaho. And uh, he was a classy guy, his nickname was Cocky. And I asked him once, I said, you know, trying to put everything together, why do they call you Cocky? He said, because I'm sure of what I'm doing. And, and he was, I yeah. thought, hmm, that makes sense. Yeah. Everything he said made sense. Yeah. So I would have to say Gibson number one, Carlton number two. I, I caught Carlton uh, 228 starts and Gibson 197 starts. As a matter of fact, Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright just passed us for the all-time Cardinal uh, battery. And, uh, and, but Bob was unto himself. Yeah. I mean, uh, he was, loved to work fast. And my job as a 20, my first full year was 1963. And uh, I was out of options. The Cardinals had to keep me. I started off as a third string catcher at the beginning of the season. And after about five weeks, uh, Gene Oliver was going poorly, and I had my opportunity. And then I caught, at one time, 97 straight games in this town um, and in the heat wow. and everything. Believe me, I was proud, could have played, you know, played doubleheaders and all that sort of stuff. I loved it and loved what I was doing. But Gibson taught me lessons that I still, you know, in watching games today, I still am influenced by some of the conversations that I had with Gibson. Tim McCarver with Jerry Remy and what a memory Tim has about his career. He's working tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals in a broadcast booth. That was a wonderful conversation. Really enjoyed both of uh, you guys in that. We well, got more of it, Dave, coming up, and he gets really into Gibson and Steve Carlton, and it's very, very interesting stuff. I found it fascinating. Well, we're getting ready for game one of this quick two game series, and the Red Sox lineup brought to you by Toyota's website for deals, buyatoyota.com. The Sox in 1967 throwback uniforms when they face St. Louis. And it'll be Mookie Betts to lead things off. He's in right field. Dustin Pedroia at second base, Andrew Bogart's the shortstop. Andrew Benintendi at left field, trying to get out of an 0 for 19. Mitch Moreland at first with Christian Vasquez doing the catching. Jackie Bradley is in center field, batting seventh. Devin Marrero, third baseman, hitting eighth. And Eduardo Rodriguez is the pitcher, of course, in the National League City. And Hanley Ramirez out of the lineup tonight because there is no DH. They'll be facing a right hander Lance Lynn. He is four and one a 275 ERA and he has won four consecutive decisions. The defense tonight for the Cardinals they are last in the National League 29 errors in 36 games. Jet Jerko will be at third base. Diaz a shortstop Colton Wong at second and Matt Carpenter the first baseman. Tommy Pham in left field Dexter Fowley in center field and Randall Gretsch it. I knew he was going to mess that one up. <laughs> Gretchen could be in right field. And Yaddy and Molina doing the catching. Hey, Molina. They've got a few. Wow, they've got, they got a bunch of them. They've got a couple. The umpires are brought to you by Toyota's website for deals. Buyatoyota.com. Will Little behind the plate. See, I get the easy ones. Jeff Kellogg at first. Tim Timmons at second. James Hoy at third. We're available as telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP presented by Toyota. Visit Compra2Toyota.com to see Toyota deals not seen on TV. Buenas noches, amigos. Beautiful night for a ball game. Red Sox and the Cardinals. Feels like we have jumped from the misery of Sunday, and it felt like a lingering late fall, early winter day to summertime. And the first pitch in there for strike one, and we're underway. Now you mentioned Lynn he's had a great start to the season Red Sox are going to see a couple of top notch pitches uh, in this series against the Cardinals. Mookie just named the American League player of the week for the second time in his career what a week he had three homers 11 RBIs 22 total bases. In a spectacular week when he returned to the leadoff spot. Red Sox beginning this six game trip. Just a game over 500 in 19 and 18. And Lynn, a big guy, 6'5, about 275. And that one swung on a high fly ball left center, hit well. Fowler's back, turning around. She's out of here. 
Mookie Betts for the 10th time in his career leads off a ball game with a home run. He stays red hot and the Red Sox are on top one to nothing. Now we highlighted Mookie Betts uh, in our view from the booth tonight the American League player of the week and he's uh, off to another great start this week. Betts jumps on a fastball and it's kind of a typical Mookie home run you know left center line shot kind of a home run that he he takes out of the ballpark and very quickly the Red Sox have the one nothing lead. Well for every Red Sox home run this season Speedway donates five hundred dollars to Boston Children's Hospital. Stop by your local Speedway and quench your thirst with a refreshing fountain soda or a speedy freeze any size for just sixty nine cents. So that is ten career leadoff home runs for Mookie that ties the franchise record. He's not tied with Jacoby Ellsbury. Filed away by Dustin Pedroia. Now Jerry you talked about it when John Farrell shuffled the lineup and put him in that leadoff spot. You predicted this would launch him that this is exactly what would happen. Maybe not all the home runs he's hit right but the kind of energy he's bringing at the top of the lineup in production. Well I just felt like there was nothing wrong that was going on last year in the leadoff spot you know and he had a tremendous year there and I think I've always said it's a comfort zone for, uh, for certain players and I think the leadoff spot is a comfort zone for Mookie Betts. I think he felt too much pressure down on those three four holes. That one socked high and deep to right field. Richard going back all the way to the wall and he'll make the play. Boy, a couple of long ones by the Red Sox right away against Lynn. This one caught by the right fielder. Now this is any indication the ball is really taking off here tonight uh, in St. Louis. Very warm night. About 85 degrees to start the game I believe and uh, the ball a little bit different in the cold weather. <laughs> it doesn't take off quite like that. Oh, what a difference as we give you a look at the weather brought to you by Benjamin Moore paint like no other 86 right now it is humid very clear not a cloud in the sky actually as Xander Bogarts gets in what a difference from the rainy and miserable 11 to 2 loss on Sunday four hours and 33 minutes to Tampa Bay this feels like baseball weather Xander hitting 339. Maybe tonight his first home run. And 11 runs batted in for Bogarts. We're talking about Lynn the pitcher and he missed all of last year. He had uh, elbow replacements uh, ligament surgery. And uh, bounced around a little bit in the minor leagues. But uh, did not pitch in the big leagues last year. But as I said off to a terrific start this season. They did pitch against the Red Sox a few years ago three seasons ago at Fenway Park and pitched very well. He allowed one run in seven innings. The Red Sox have already gotten one run against him. On a blast by Betts. And it's pop foul out of play. Well, John Farrell said after Sunday's defeat he said we've got to execute make plays make pitches up and down the lineup everybody has to contribute. So there was a sense I think a new sense of a bit of urgency from the Red Sox manager coming on this six game trip. And that'll be outside for a ball. Not by very much a slide of that time from Lynn and just missed the outside part of the plate. Lynn turned 30 on the 12th of May. And now the 2 2 to Xander. Rattle the second baseman Colton Wong who's up and over two down. It's a great ballpark isn't it really is great setting here. Fans here love their Cardinals that's for sure the Midwest you know Kansas City St. Louis great great fans they come from long distances to come to ball games. Yeah they often make it not just a one game more like a three game trek. So they you know pack the hotels especially on the weekends and they stay for an entire series. Benintendi now average down to 294. Oh for his last 19 he said after Sunday when he was hitless again he went 0 for 4 he said I'm fine. No problems physically. Oh one hits him so he gets drilled. 
And attend to your board with two down. Trying to come inside with that fastball. Certainly no intent there by Lynn, especially with a couple of outs in the inning. Already a run on the board, just coming trying to come inside on Ben Attendee and gets him off the leg. Sends up Moreland in a mini skid of his own. He's over his last 11. Red Sox in the lead, one to nothing right away in the Betts Homer, number seven for Mookie Betts. Betts is now homered five times in his last eight games. And the first one to Moreland will miss outside. Yeah, they don't put the shift on Moreland. They put the second baseman Wong way back in the outfield area, the second baseman. But the shortstop, as you can see, is on the shortstop side of second base. Most teams shift completely on Moreland. Benintendi holding. Moreland for what it's worth I'm never really sure if it means anything but he had a tremendous batting practice session launching one after another particularly pulling them down the right field line which is 335 400 feet to dead center it's a very fair ballpark may find out tonight if it means anything and a 1 1 runner holds and it's inside. Now ben Attendee has three steals on the season with two outs in the inning. It would not be a bad time for him to maybe try to pick one up. Of course, you got Molina behind the plate. That puts the brakes on a lot of people. Yeah, that's a stop sign for a lot of teams. Not running here into right field, but Wong is there back to first base and in time to get him. As Carpenter came back to get the throw and that retires the side but the Red Sox are on the board on the Mookie Betts blast his seventh of the season and he ties the Red Sox all time record one nothing Sox here in St. Louis. The Cardinal lineup tonight brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. It'll be Fowler, Pham, and Carpenter, one, two, three. Jerko, the third baseman, Molina doing the catching. Diaz at short, Grichik in right field with Wong at second. Lance Lynn, the pitcher, batting ninth. All facing the Red Sox starter. Presented by New England Audi dealers. Eduardo Rodriguez, one and one at ERA of 280. His first career outing against St. Louis. Last time out very strong at Milwaukee that was Thursday no decision 
But he allowed just three hits, didn't walk anybody in six innings. And one thing we mentioned too is, you know, the last three, four starts, he's really picked up his pace, uh, more like Chris Sale, getting the ball, getting back on the rubber, especially with nobody on base. Fowler battling along at 227. Speedy switch hitter helped the Cubs win the World Series last fall, and then he left to sign a five year deal as a free agent here against uh, the enemy. Now, the Cubs. This is their number one rival, the St. Louis Cardinals. Fly ball center field, Jackie Bradley with a routine play, backing up round number one. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are 14th in the American League, 32 errors in 37 games. Devin Marrero at third base. Xander Bogots to shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Mitch Maul on the first baseman. Left to right, Andrew Bennett, Tendy, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Mookie Betts, and Christian Vasquez doing the catching. Sends up Tommy Pham, getting 371, three home runs, so he's off to a hot start. Cardinals playing pretty well right now to 21 and 15. They're in first place by a game and a half in their division. Mike Bethini to manager. And the 1 1 coming. Toward the middle, softly hit. Pedroia quickly on and gets him. Two down. That game, Rod Rodriguez pitched last time out against Milwaukee. Only a one run run in that game. Did not walk anybody and have five strikeouts. Sox won that game 4 to 1 on a late rally. Go back over his last 29 and a third innings. Rodriguez has an ERA of 153. I mean, it's Chris Sale like. Matt Carpenter, the first baseman, checking in at 252, already has eight home runs and takes a strike. 95 on that fastball from Rodriguez. That velocity has been up over his last couple of starts. Working with Vasquez again. Here's the 0 1. Fouled away off Christian. Right off the face mask. That'll shake you up a little bit. Foul ball that takes the mask right off Christian Vasquez. Well, he has Carpenter in the hole 0 and 2. Trying to make it a fast first inning. Red Sox had one nothing on the Betts homer. Fastball away. Just got a piece of it to hang in there. Actually, well, actually threw there with, with uh, Vasquez was asking for a fastball up. He shook that off and he just wanted to throw the fastball away. That ball was up and just fouled, fouled off. Carbon with good power. Two down and two strikes. Red Sox here for just two. Rick Porcello goes tomorrow night against the right hander Mike Leak. Jerko on deck. And rattle foul again. Last year the Cardinals did not make it to the postseason for the first time in quite a while. First time since 2010. Though they won 86 games. They would finish in second place in the NL Central. But thinking postseason again this year. Here's the one two. I pop in the left coming on Benintendi plenty of time. Rodriguez with an excellent start gets him one two three Red Sox up by one after one.
is brought to you by Toyota's website for deals. Buy at Toyota.com. Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Lexus and Alexa Strikes Out Hunger Program. Plain Ridge Park Casino, 45 minutes from Boston. Infinity, empower the drive. And by Southwest, yes to low fares with nothing to hide, that's transparency. Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien with you, high above the field here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Great to have you with us tonight. Certainly hoping whatever weather you have is just like this because it's been just splendid here. Vasquez to lead things off in a second. Red Sox on top one to nothing then Bradley and Marrero to follow. I was actually had an off day here yesterday and my room looks out over the pool and I couldn't believe to see people sitting by the pool. It reminded me of being in Florida. <laughs> yeah. That'll sink in there for a called strike on Vasquez. Sun has been shining brightly, very warm here. Expected to be again tomorrow. And the Red Sox move on to Oakland. It's going to be tough to leave. Vasquez has hit safely in three consecutive games. He was two for four Sunday against Tampa Bay. Sox right now just kind of middle of the road in scoring, overall pitching near the bottom of the American League in defense. Which has been an oddity. That was not expected. And looking to get hot. One two pitch. Ooh. And he called him out. Yeah, pretty good pitch right there. Nasty slide it to the outside part of the plate. Vasquez doesn't like it, but looked like a good pitch to me. You'll see the break and you'll see where it'll end up. Down and away, and then that pitch number four just gets a piece of the the outside corner when you get two strikes anything close you better be going because if not you're leaving in the hands of the umpire and well you don't want to trust that. So Vasquez done in on strike three brings up Jackie Bradley. We talk about the Red Sox needing to get on a roll and individually he probably more than any other player has to on the offensive end. Sunday a strikeout with the bases loaded. High fly ball left center. That's hit well. Fowler backing up, backing up all the way to the wall. That one on the top of the wall. It's gone. That's a home run. Jackie Bradley muscles one out of here. And the Red Sox have hit a pair tonight to lead it two to nothing. His third of the season. Now when you look at Jackie Bradley and, and it's happened a little bit more recently when he's using the opposite field that's generally when he's swinging the bat well. And that time it looked like a changeup that was down in the zone. Something off speed that he's able to stay back on and lift deep enough to the opposite field for the home run. Nice effort out there by Fowler but he can't come up with it. So two home runs for the Red Sox on the night. Brings up Devin Marrero at 188. No homers. He's driven in two. That seems to be the power alley tonight. Yeah, the ball looks like it's traveling very, very well. And it should in this kind of weather. So Mookie Betts in the first, Jackie Bradley in the second, and the Red Sox have a 2 0 lead against Lance Lynn. Jerry mentioned that he came back after he missed the entire 2016 season after Tommy John surgery. Ground ball softly hit. Jerko up and over. Two down. Hey, college football returns to America's most beloved ballpark with the Fenway Gridiron Series presented by Your Call Football. Tickets are on sale right now. Visit RedSox.com slash gridiron for more information. Well, the home run by Jackie just got out 401 feet the tail of the tape. Here's Eduardo Rodriguez he likes to swing the bat 0 for 6 in his career. But he enjoys it. He's one of those guys in the clubhouse you know that can't wait to go out and take batting practice when he knows he's going to be working in a National League park. In play. Wong handles that chance. That is all but the Red Sox with another blast. JBJ with number three. And the Sox lead it two to nothing.
by clean, crisp Coors Light. World Series history between the Sox and the Cardinals, and it's considerable. Of course, the Red Sox winning the last time here in 2013 and won the World Series four games to two. Goes back all the way to 1946. Cardinals winning in 67. 2004, Red Sox swept them four straight. It was the great Bob Gibson. In 1967 World Series, he was a handful. And they're at it again. This is the 125th celebration season of Cardinal baseball. Began playing 1892. Yeah, tomorrow they're going to have a lot of those uh, 1967 Cardinals back here for the ball game against the Red Sox. Here's the third baseman Jed Jerko hitting 333, seven homers, hit 30 last year to lead their ball club. The 2013 World Series, the games played in St. Louis were fascinating because of how two of them ended. I fly to right field. Racing for the corner, Mookie Betts has room there for the first hour. Remember, one of those games ended on an obstruction call on Will Middlebrooks at third base. That was game three, and game four ended on a pickoff by Koji. He picked off a guy playing tonight for St. Louis, Colton Wong. He's their second baseman. And that had never happened in the history of the World Series. Here's the perennial all-star catcher Yadier Molina 273 home runs. Oh the slide of their time from Rodriguez that's the second one he's throwing in this inning the first two of the game. 0 1 to Molina. Strike two. Fouls it up with a change up away. So Molina has not seen a fastball yet. Yadier now 34 years old. And he's carved out a place for himself among the Cardinals all time greats a seven time all star. Won eight consecutive gold gloves at one point between 2008 and 15. Two strikes Jackie Bradley's moved really moved over in uh, center field closer to Mookie Betts. The reason for that and they're expecting more of a defensive swing when you're down with two strikes and. Bradley in center field you can see him now shading him to the opposite field so he and uh, Betts very close together. The lefty with a one two to Molina. Liner foul. You go back to 2004 a moment. That all Red Sox fans will treasure forever the final out. In St. Louis. Come back to Folk. And the Red Sox were world champions after an 86 year wait. Check swing. Did he go? He did. That is strike three. They did appeal to Kellogg at first, and he rings him up. That's nice to see right there because that's Rodriguez picking up a strikeout on a slider, and you know, he can go. A whole game without throwing three or four of those. He's thrown three in this inning, and this time he picks up the strikeout with it. There's the slider down and in. That's exactly where he wants it. Well, he began his last start with a run of outs. He's at it again here tonight. Aledmus Diaz, the shortstop, 262 with five home runs. Nobody on base, two out. Red Sox ahead, two nothing on home runs. And Mike Matheny, the manager, was the catcher that year in 2004, and he was talking about it today. He was talking about the Red Sox facing the Red Sox in 04. He said, "I've never seen a team more locked in in my life than the 04 Red Sox." He said they were a buzzsaw. We had no chance. And then he had no chance managing against David Ortiz in 2013. As Poppy would hit 688 in that World Series. Is that all? Is that, that was that's it. it. <laughs> Not sure he made it out. It felt like he didn't. Yeah, yeah, he had a couple of good days. Manny Ramirez hit 412 in that World Series. Mark Bellhorn with four RBIs. And that's going to be a strike, and that'll reel back in Diaz. 
Well, the umpires don't like that. No, Nia is shaking his head. That's a good pitch. I mean, that fifth pitch has got the, enough of the strike zone to be called a strike. Sets it right into the mid of where Vasquez is, and that's a good call by Little, the home plate umpire. Three and two. Two down. And just missed with that one, so that'll be ball four, and Diaz is on. He becomes the first base runner for St. Louis. Red Sox season ticket holders experience the best seats, price, and benefits Fenway has to offer. For information on becoming a season ticket holder, please visit RedSox.com slash season tickets or call 877-RED-SOX-9 today. As usual, plenty of Red Sox fans in this city tonight. Randall Grichik now to right fielder, 246, four homers. He's driven in 15. Cardinals have their first base runner. Sox up two to nothing. Slapped in the air to left field. Benintendi with the catch to retire the side. No runs, a walk, one left, two nothing Boston. Are you a fan of two game series Red Sox with a two gamer here in St. Louis text one for yes two for no your answer goes to five three six five three six message and data rates may apply one message per vote. You know what I'm a fan of what's it seven game series that means you've <laughs> done something yeah, right. Yeah I like that. What's better than the seventh game and the Celtics would vouch for that after putting away. Washington and moving on to take on LeBron. Our congrats to the Celtics as they continue a magical season that's in there for a strike on Mookie Betts. That was uh, highly watched, I would say, by members of the Red Sox traveling party yesterday at Game Seven. Yeah, I didn't miss it. That's for sure. So seven o'clock start here, and St. Louis watched all of it. Mookie Betts ripping a home run to start the ball game. Hard hit ground ball backing up Jerko with a spin. One man gone. Dustin Pedroia next. You know Dave yesterday off days of the road for me are really bad. I mean I, I get bored because I'm not one to go about town. And I set an all time personal best as far as dinner time yesterday. <laughs> what was it. Three o'clock. No. I went downstairs I got out of the room I went to the lobby. And I said, I'm going to just kill some time here. And I'm saying, I'm seeing people eating in the bar area of the hotel. And I'm saying, wait a minute. Now. Why don't I do that? 
you know. But, but, but they were they were finishing lunch. They were having lunch. <laughs> so I went in and I took a look at the bar menu and I saw a nice cheeseburger on here. So I decided to go for that three o'clock. It's an all time record. Popped into right field and Gritchick to get under that put it away two up and two down. I just I can't believe you did that three o'clock in the afternoon. You don't you don't have you have no idea how completely bored I was. <laughs> Off days on the road just bore me to death, and, yep. and I I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do, so I said, "Well, I might as well eat now." I knew the Celtic game was coming up at seven, mm -hmm. so I just got it done. I don't know how you do it. As Bogarts gets in, he's 0 for one because if if I'm eating at three o'clock, by like 9:30, I'm starving again. I was good. I was fine. You were fine with that? I was fine. You don't go for like one of the little, you know, Kit Kats in the room or the can of Pringles or anything like that? No, because they're too darn expensive. They, they're, you get them out of the mini bar there and it's like. Like 47 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? 2 and 0 the count. Yeah, I do every once in a while. And I'm, I'm, I always regret it and I'm always embarrassed when I get downstairs to pay it. And I'm like, you know, I had, I had a, you know, a Charleston chew <laughs> and a little can of peanuts. Yeah. It cost me $100. I mean, how is that possible? But you really needed that, Charles. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. yeah, my dentist will tell you. I feel like an idiot. That's like when you go to New York and you have breakfast, you know, room service breakfast. Oh, I, I you never do. I know. No, can't do it. Can't. Cannot do it. It's like half of my annual salary. A strike on Xander. One for three with a double on Sunday. Red Sox on top here two to nothing. I was just glad when you went down to the lobby this time in St. Louis you stayed awake. Yeah no, I, yeah no I was good. Cut on a missed strike three one two three go to Red Sox so Lynn gets him in order Boston up two nothing. The Geico Red Sox moment honoring the 07 Red Sox World Championship season. Game number 38. The Red Sox would lose to Detroit 7 to 2. Justin Verlander with the win. Struck out seven in seven and two thirds. Here the Red Sox lead in St. Louis two to nothing. Game one of two. And Rodriguez sharp early. He's walked one, struck out one. Colton Wong, first man in in the third inning, floats a foul out of play. You mentioned you may recall this that Wong was the guy that Koji picked up first base to end game four of the World Series here in St. Louis. That made history the only time a World Series game has ended on such a play. 0 2. 
Wong shook that off to three home runs in the 2014 postseason for the Cardinals including a walk off in the NLCS against San Francisco. The pitcher Lynn on deck. Wong hitting 259 with a homer 13 runs batted in a native of Hawaii. One two. Up the middle. Bogarts can't get it. Base hit. And Wong the first man to have one tonight against Rodriguez. Let's get down to Garen Austin. Thanks OB. I caught up with Drew Pomerantz and he said that his arm feels fine. He said that he threw a lot today and he'll throw a bullpen tomorrow. And guys he said he expects to make his start on Saturday. He said this is very different than what he experienced during spring training and he said what he thinks it is is that he's changed his mechanics. He said he was shorter last year and he's longer this year as he's been trying to create more velocity. He said he needs to get back to his mechanics and clean things up but he does not anticipate this being a season long problem guys. All right good to know that he feels OK. That's certainly good news Garen. Thank you very much. Long the runner on that means Lynn will be up there to bunt. With Marrero charging in from third base. He'll be trying to bunt this ball down the first base line. Because Marrero can charge hard, the first baseman has to hold the runner on. And of course, the Cardinals have to be, just as the Red Sox have to be when Molina is back there, they have to be very mindful of Vasquez. And a throw back to first base he's so good at. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, on both camps, that those things I talked about prior to the game in the meetings. So Wong the runner, kind of a short lead at first base. Marrero creeping in at third. He turns to bunt, pops it up along the line, foul, and scooped up by Moreland. Fans don't miss Nesson live tomorrow evening at 5.30 on Nesson. We'll have reaction from the NBA draft lottery. Nesson live is presented by Cross Insurance. Down to one ball and one strike on Lynn. Dexter Fowler on deck for the Cardinals. Lynn not much of a hitter. Batting average underneath 100. You look at the stolen bases for Wong. So pretty good speed. Here comes the 1 1. Lynn turns to bunt, fouls it away. That's a tough pitch to bunt to. That, that's a fastball up and in, and it's tough to get the barrel of the bat on top of that. Result is that you get the barrel of the bat underneath the rising fastball. As you can see, the result, the pop up. Not very good mechanics here by Lynn on the bun. Nobody out, a man on. They'll leave the bun on. Runs in and it gets him. He gets hit by the pitch. We almost never see that. Just trying to drop down a bunt. He gets drilled. That'll put runners at first and second. He's very upset as he flips the bat. He tries to bust the fastball inside again to get him to pop the ball up, and instead it gets Lynn. And you're right. That's something you don't see very often at all. Now that's pretty good fundamentals right there for the bunt. But uh, that ball just followed him right inside and got a piece of him. He's not happy. Of course, Ben and got hit by a pitch too. So Wong down to second. Lynn at first. Dexter Fowler will be the batter. He's 0 for 1 to fly to center. Now, neither one of those pitches were intentional, that's for sure. No way you want to hit it out. Now Lynn should have been an automatic out. He's trying to give himself up anyway. 
So all of a sudden Rodriguez in a little bit of trouble here Fowler with good power and he will take ball one. Fowler was the starting center fielder for the National League All Star team last year. He's been a triples machine in his career. 2 0. In fact, he has more triples than anybody in baseball since 2009. This is a good triples park. Wong and Lynn on the bases. Red Sox ahead 2 0. That's going to be ball three. Uh, three times missing on the inside corner, inside part of the play. A couple of times with the fastball, one time with a changeup. So a little walk on the wild side here for the left hander. Three nothing. He's swinging away and he chops a foul. So he had the green light on 3 0. Trying to put three quick wins on the board for the Cardinals and take the lead in the game. Fam on deck. Here comes the 3 1 to Fowler. That's a strike. Everything's been inside to him too. Bottom of bottom of the strike zone, inside corner, in, off the inside corner. Fowler brand new here in St. Louis this year. Looking to come through early tonight. Here comes the 3-2 from Rodriguez. Got a piece of it. Fala has a tendency to strike out. He has struck out 36 times this season, and Rodriguez would love to strike him out right here. Cardinals lately have been playing very good baseball. They've won eight of their last ten. The season started out quite poorly, but they've been on fire lately. They lead it first and second, 3 2 from the left hander. And a deep drive into left field, racing back Benintendi. That ball's off the wall. One run is in. Lynn heading into third. The throw comes in behind him. It's an RBI double for Dexter Fowler as he drives in his 13th run of the season. That'll make it a two to one game. Well, Fowler has the count in his favor. He gets that fastball at 93 on the inside corner. Everything inside, and he cleans it out very hard over the head of Ben Attendee. And runners at second and third now for Tommy Pham. Carl Willis out to consult with Rodriguez. So it's gone single hit batsman, not only hit batsman, but the pitcher. And then the double by Fowler, which almost got out of here. So after a fast start, he's run into a speed bump here in the third inning. Now tonight's suits are designed by Joseph Abood, custom made in the USA of fine Italian fabrics, available at Men's Warehouse. You can text Nesson to 66960 and receive a coupon for $20 off your next purchase of $100 or more. At men's warehouse, data rates may apply. Fam is 0 for 1. He's grounded a second. 29 year old picture of perseverance. He spent nine years in the Cardinal minor league system before he ever got a call up, and that's in for a strike. And they brought him up in 2014, and he had two at bats, and then right back to the minors. Already homered three times this year. He has good power. 0 oh 2. 
Now the crowd didn't like it, but pretty good pitch according to strike zone. I think sometimes when Vasquez pulls it back like that, he leaves the impression it was outside. But that was a strike. Oh, two foul away. Matt Carpenter on deck. Cardinals threatening second and third. They have a run in two to one Red Sox. Home half of the third inning. Rodriguez really needs an out badly. Trying to strike out Fam. He has him in the hole. And the 0 2. Lynn and Fowler on the bases. Here's the one two pitch from Rodriguez. Flutter foul as he hung in there. Get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, first aid station located behind Section 12 on the lower concourse. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. Visit BIDMC.org. Now Vasquez back behind the dish now. One ball, two strikes on Tommy Pham. And a high twisting fly ball to center field. Room for Jackie Bradley. But Lynn, the runner at third, will tag up. The throw coming to third, and the trail runner will move up as well as the run scores. Fowler very aggressively going second to third. And this game is tied. Yeah, very productive out right there. Ball hit deep enough, obviously, to get the man home from third, but also get the run of foul to third base with less than two outs. Has the contact, the deep fly ball on the slider that time from Rodriguez. Bradley trying to get momentum going toward third base. That's where he wants to go with the ball, but it's about three hops in. And Fowler has no problem getting there. Now the Red Sox pull the infield in. And a batter will be Matt Carpenter. 0 for 1. He's fly to left. And Fowler 90 feet away, and that's in there for a strike. Carpenter's driven in 24 runs. So he has been their go to RBI guy hitting out of that three slot. One man away. Two hits in the inning for St. Louis off the lefty. That's a called strike. 0 and 2. A lot of history between the Red Sox and the St. Louis Cardinals. They've met the World Series four times 1946, 1967, 04, and 2013. O2 popped up racing back Bogarts who is in coming on Ben and and a sliding play the runner tags here's the throw home and they're not going to get him and St. Louis takes the lead they're on top three to two Fowler taking off like a shot as Bogarts made the sliding catch in the outfield now that's very aggressive base running on Fowler's part you know he knows if Benetton makes the catch, he's not going to go. But with the infield then Bogots, look how far he's got to go. And if he makes the backhanded play, follows just off. And it's not even close at home plate. That's great, great base running. Reading who's going to make the catch. And then because he's going away from the play and going into a slide, he's going to tag and score the run. You know, I think Ben Attendee for a second lost that ball in the sky. He you looked think so? like yep. it looked like he was looking for it, couldn't find it because, you know, if he catches it, 
they're not going to be able to score that run. I think you're right. The way we just caught him looking up like that. Yeah. Checking the sky. Twilight right now. Jerko swings, line drive, and Pedroia can't quite reach it. A base hit. So another hit here in the third inning against Rodriguez. So all of a sudden, he's not nearly as effective as he was in the first two innings. How many times in, the, in your broadcasting career have you seen a sacrifice six on a fly ball? Might, I mean, might be a first. Yeah. Shows you how fast that Fowler is, that he's that confident he can take off. And as you said, he scored easily. Yeah, he just made a great read on that. This is Molina, 0 for 1 with a strikeout, 3 2 St. Louis. Everything started out with a base hit by Wong, and then rather inexplicably, while Lance Lynn was trying to bunt, Rodriguez drilled him with a pitch. And the double by Fowler. Consecutive sacrifice flies, and now a single by Jerko. Now Jerko with a couple of steals on the season has not been caught. Getting some attention from Rodriguez. And the pitch to Molina. Molina has appeared in four World Series, two of them against the Red Sox in 04 and in 13, and lost them both. Two on the man on, and three runs in. That's a strike. It's that change up a little bit high in the zone, but does pick up the outside corner with it. Molina is the man who replaced Mike Matheny as the everyday catcher in 2004. There's a shot drilled to left. Benintendi on the run. He makes the play. That ball was hit very sharply. There were a few of them in the inning, and the Cardinals rally to get three. They're on top three to two as we go to the fourth. By McDonald's. Pair any freshly baked McCafe bakery muffin with any size hot coffee or medium iced coffee for just $1.99 at any McDonald's. 
Red Sox now trailing 3 2 to Lance Lynn. He was right in the middle of that rally when he got hit by a pitch and would score one of their three runs. So it was a wild frame in many ways for Rodriguez. Benintendi was hit by a pitch in the first inning. He'll take a breaking ball for a strike. And Benintendi certainly not alone among the Red Sox in his recent struggles at the plate. Both Mitch Moreland and Jackie Bradley were scuffling coming in, but Jackie's hit a home run. A little bobble by Wong up and over and dropped by Carpenter. So it'll be an error on that play. Benintendi safely aboard. Yeah, Wong, you know, bobbled the ball, and I think was a surprised a little bit at how fast Benintendi gets down the line, and then made just a terrible throw to first base. So it's a bobble. And then followed by a bad flip to first base that pulls Carpenter off the bag. So Red Sox catch a break there on the error by Wong. That's a seventh error at second base already. A point of comparison, Dustin Pedroia hasn't made an error in 70 games. At the same position. Well, here's Moreland. 0 for 1. He has already grounded to Wong at second. So he's trying to snap an 0 for 12. These are the doors that open that the Red Sox have to take advantage of. They have to. Cardinals did it last uh, inning when they hit uh, the pitcher, Lynn. The Sox is six and seven in the month of May. Brian Butterfield, a man from Maine, working third base. In that coach's box, although rarely in it. Most coaches don't spend much time in those boxes. Technically, you're supposed to have one foot in there at all times, but no umpire addresses that. And account two balls and a strike. Now, you know, they kind of leave that up to a manager. Let's say a manager complains that a coach should be in the box. Well, if he does, that means their coaches also have to stay in the box. Right. They make it official for all the coaches to stay in the box. And so they don't want that. It's almost never, never, never brought up. Vasquez on deck. Benatendi runs and swung on and fouled out of play. And he got a very good jump. Of course, you do have Molina back there. Ace ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox tickets from bleachers to boxes all with a 200 percent guarantee. Ace offers mobile entry and will send your tickets right to your phone. Visit aceticket.com now or call 1-800-MY-SEATS. Moreland's been a very good road hitter hitting 350 away from Fenway. Here's the 2-2. That one socked to dead away center field. Fowler back on the track as it lined up. He leaps and he hauls it in. He made a fine play. Benintendi retreating to first base. He's been a busy center fielder tonight. Now yeah, Fowler made that look very easy going back to the wall, going into the jump to make the catch. And Benintendi had routed second base, so he had to re tag second base on the way back. That ball would not have been a home run, but certainly off the top of the wall. He's already found his way to the top of that wall, but couldn't get to Jackie Bradley's home run. Mookie Betts hit one over his head. And now Moreland just misses one. So Vasquez will climb in, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. One out, one on. Red Sox trail 3 2. Anytime Vasquez comes to the plate with a man at first base, he becomes a hit and run candidate. For the year, he's hitting 389 against right handed pitching. One man gone and one man on. Red Sox starting a six game trip here tonight. Much longer stay in Oakland. Four games against the A's. Cut. 
He's right now dead last in the AL West with a record of 16 and 22. Cardinals much better. They lead their division. They have a one and a half game lead over Milwaukee. Stay on top of the latest Red Sox news with Nesson's free Red Sox text alerts from breaking news to in game alerts. Nesson will make sure you're in the know. To sign up, just text Red Sox to 536 536. Message and data rates may apply. One ball and one strike to the Red Sox catcher. He grounds that one toward third along the line and a foul ball. Throw goes into second. And they complete the play, but it's ruled a foul ball. So Vasquez will come on back. And a count of one ball and two strikes. Now Jerko doing everything possible to get to this ball before it go goes into foul territory. Would have been safe at second base. But None of it matters. Foul ball and Vasquez up there with a one two count. Jackie Bradley on deck. He's ripped a home run tonight. A ball, two strikes, and Vasquez. He started the evening hitting 364 overall, and he won't chase. You know, the team that is threatening to run away and hide. In their division is the Houston Astros. They already have an eight game lead, Jerry. They're playing great baseball. Yep. Record of 27 and 12. And they already had a big lead tonight against the Marlins early in their game. So, very similar to the start the Cubs got off to last year. When they would go on to win 103. I don't know if that's going to happen with Houston, but. They're really pitching extremely well. They have Keuchel on the mound tonight. He's six and zero, oh. and their lineup is really produced. With El Tuve and Springer and Correa, trying for that two seam fastball, get a ground ball. Didn't miss by very much down at the bottom of the strike zone. Three and two. And then hasn't walked anybody. He's hit a batter. He's allowed two home runs, a pair of solo shots. I think you send Benatini here on the three two count. Off he goes. He got jammed big time and rolled a foul. One thing you want don't want to have happen is a ground ball to end this inning on a double play. So you send Ben Attendee at first base. There's the jump at first, and you're, you're banking on contact right there. The count's three and two. You're not getting a normal jump that you would get if you're trying to steal a base. You, you're banking on contact. Three two St. Louis, fourth inning. Christian Vasquez with a long at bat here against Lance Lynn. Benintendi off again. Swung on and missed. Here's the throw down. A tag. He is out. A strike him out. Throw him on double play. Molina strikes again. Side retired. 3 2 Cardinals.
Steve will break down tonight's game. You'll hear from Rodriguez along with John Farrell. Whatever, whenever, wherever, who but W.B. Mason. It was a rocky third inning for Erod. As he surrendered three hits, three runs, hit a batter. In fact, that was the opposing pitcher. And gave up his lead. So we'll see if he can settle back in here in the fourth inning. Diaz, Grichik, and Wong, the batters, do up. So that'll be six, seven, and eight. Well, the strike them out, throw them out, and look at this bullet right here. They're just waiting on Ben Attendee at second base. A Molina bullet, which they've been watching for many years here in the National League. Out of that great catching family. Jose and Benji, his brothers, who also not only caught in the big leagues, but they all won World Series rings, all three of them. Was it Benji we saw hit for the cycle at Fenway? I believe it was, yes. One of the most unlikely cycles you're ever going to see. Yeah, the last one was the triple. Yep. Two and two. And he was he was motoring to third base at about, I'd say, three miles an hour. <laughs> but he hit it in the perfect spot. Yeah, and it took about 16 different bounces, I think, out there in the triangle. And it had to. But he got it. I fly slicing foul. So to count two and two on Diaz. Fans with Benjamin Moore, you can paint like no other. Go to BenjaminMoore.com to find your nearest retailer. Rodriguez looking for a K of Diaz. And he gets it. He strikes him out one away in the fourth. A nice little bounce back inning here for uh, Rodriguez would be a big help. He strikes out the first man, gets the fastball inside to Diaz to pick up the uh, swing and miss. Most pitches have been away, then he decides to go to the inside part of the plate and gets the no contact swing. Randall Gritchick now 0 for 1. He's flied out to left. Right hand hitter who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. In fact, he belted a grand slam on his 25th birthday a couple of years ago. Last year, hit 31 home runs between St. Louis and the minor leagues. Although he's a guy who strikes out a lot. Yeah, 40 strikeouts so far on the season. One out base is empty in the bottom of the fourth. That one on the corner says Will Little. And the 2 1 from the southpaw. Colton Wong on deck. Rick Porcello goes here tomorrow night at 8:15 against Mike Leake. Couple of right-handers. Red Sox then will continue to head west to Oakland. Sox actually stay in San Francisco. Here's the 3-1. A wave and a miss. Fastball still consistently at 95 miles an hour for Rodriguez. Now looking for back to back strikeouts to open up the fourth inning the three two and spoiled out of play. Grichik so far this season with four home runs. Rodriguez ready in the 67 throwback uniform and he walks him. So he's walked two men tonight. You can catch a condensed two hour version of this Red Sox game at midnight on Sox in two brought to you by Jeep the most awarded lineup of SUVs ever.
Colton Wong will be next. He singled and scored a run in the third, one of the three runs the Cardinals got to take the lead. He gets down in a crouch, but he'll take a strike. Wong comes from a very athletic family growing up in Hawaii. His father played baseball at Southern Cal. His sister played softball at the University of Hawaii, and his brother is an infielder in the Tampa Bay organization. Pops that one foul back out of play. Gretzik at first base can run a little bit. He's got four steals. He's been caught one time. Maybe trying to get in the scoring position before that pitch's uh, place comes up in the order. That's Lance Lynn, and he's on deck. And the 0-2 from Rodriguez will not be made. Two strikes on a number eight hitter, Colton Wong. With one out. One ball, two strikes. Summer like conditions today in St. Louis. Temperatures into the high 80s. After what we saw Sunday, it was just lovely. One two all even now on Wong we talk about Rodriguez speeding up his tempo but that's usually when the bases are empty yeah, he slows it down considerably when there's a man on base and a two two to Wong. Runner holding. That's ball three. So it's been a scuffle these last couple of innings. He'll take a long stroll out behind the hill. First inning, he got him one, two, three. Second inning, he walked a man, but he breezed through that frame for the most part, but not the case in the third. And now he's walked a man here in the fourth and he's gone to three and two on Wong. Gritchick not running. There's a shot out to left center field. Jackie Bradley with a lengthy run, but he runs it down. Gritchick got all the way to second base. He's heading back into first, sliding in safely, and there are two away. MLB.tv Premium is back and better than ever. You can watch every out of market regular season game live. On over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Well, now, an opportunity for Rodriguez to end the fourth inning with the pitcher Lance Lynn at the plate. Remember, he hit him with a pitch when Lynn was simply trying to bunt and sacrifice in the third. And that led to a very difficult inning for Rodriguez as he allowed three runs. Now Bradley with one strike will move more over toward the uh, right field side of second base. I actually think he's a little too deep with the pitcher at the plate. Runner at first two down. Pop foul out of play. Sox got the first two runs of this game on home run solo shots by Mookie Betts and Jackie Bradley. St. Louis comes back and scores three times in the bottom of the third to take the lead. Of 
The Cardinals were a bad club early. They lost nine of their first 12 games. They were really scuffling. There was some panic here in St. Louis. Mike Matheny's team has recovered very quickly, though. One, two fouled out of play. Matheny has a son, Tate, who is in the Red Sox farm system right now. And actually got into a couple of spring training games for the Red Sox. They called him out of minor league camp to get him in a game. I believe one of the games is against St. Louis. Was selected by the Sox in the fourth round of the 2015 June draft. Right now he's at High A Salem, swinging a good bat too. He's hitting 293. One two, and he struck him out swinging. Side retired. One man left out of the fifth. Three two Cardinals. Top of the fifth, the Cardinals have a 3-2 lead. Earlier today, Joe Kelly was on the field during BP, catching up with his former teammates. I talked to him, and he said it's really fun to be back. This was the first place where he was called up into the majors and the first place that he called home. He told me that he went out with several of his former teammates and their families for dinner. It was just really great to catch up. He said he's really hoping to get into one of these games because it would be really fun to face them. And OB John Farrell said since the trade, Kelly has really developed as a pitcher and he's more aware of himself and where his strengths are and how best to apply them during the game that he's really evolved as a late inning guy. Well he certainly has and you know throwing 100 and 101 miles an hour. Those have been eye popping velocities for Joe. Well, Jackie Bradley leading off here in the fifth innings homered here tonight with one out in the second. And as he hit one over the head of Fowler. In center field. Up to that point Jackie had been four for his last 24 so the hope is with the double the other day at Fenway and now the home run here that he is finding his stroke again one ball and one strike back to the home run cut. Yeah good uh, you know good to staying back on the baseball here he gets the ball that's down and away takes it to the opposite field and has enough legs to get out of the ballpark. So Bradley picking up his third home run of the season. Marrero on deck and then Rodriguez the pitcher. Red Sox tonight facing a battle tested veteran in Lynn. Who has appeared in the postseason for St. Louis in 24 games. Including seven World Series games. He's been around the block. 2011. When they beat Texas 
And in 2013 when they lost to the Red Sox in six he appeared in both of those World Series. And that's going to be ball four. So he's walked his first man. Echo Store Technologies is donating fifty dollars for every Red Sox hit this month to the Cladoff Fund which helps raise funds to fight for children support veterans and help those battling alcohol and substance abuse. Echo Store Technologies your data center solutions provider. Devin Marrero now 0 for 1 he's grounded to third. And it continues to be the third baseman on an everyday basis. Pablo Sandoval did take batting practice here tonight, wearing a big knee brace, trying to make his way back. Yeah, joining the club for this trip and uh, taking ground balls at third base, taking batting practice during the Red Sox batting practice session. 1 0 hard ground ball to third. It skips off the third baseman, Jerko, right to Diaz. Runners are going to be safe. That one ate him alive, and the Sox have two on. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that go as a base hit because you're right. That ball took a bad hop on Jerko at third base. If he catches it, you've got yourself a double play, but watch this last bounce. How it comes back up, and well, it looks like they're going to give him an error on that. They are going to score it an error. That's their second one tonight on the infield. It's a tough error. Now Rodriguez has got to get a bunt down here. He's got to get the bunt down toward first base. Actually, excuse me, toward third base is where you should be aiming it. There's third baseman Jerko in, and Carpenter also charging in from first. And he's swinging the bat. That's a swinging bunt. Molina picks it up fair, throws to first to get him. So that would get the job done. Yeah, that, that's uh, you know I'd rather see that <laughs> because you know he he proved in his last outing that he pitched that he couldn't bunt. He took strike three right down the middle. So yeah, let him swing and you get a little dribbly, you get two men in the scoring position. Great job. <laughs> that ball went about three feet. It's a perfect bunt, really. Think about it. It almost hit him too. As he came out of the box. So that'll bring up Mookie Betts, who's belted a home run and also grounded to third. I think you're exactly right, though. I think the decision to have him swing away there goes back to Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean, he just he just proved that. I mean, he just took one right down the middle with two strikes on him. And he made did make contact in his first at bat, too. A strike to Mookie. So it advances the runners. Jackie Bradley down to third and Marrero into second. Red Sox down by one run, but now pressing the matter here in the fifth. Mookie leading the club with 26 RBIs. That backs him off. Well, his last seven games hitting over 400, five doubles, five home runs. He's been crushing the ball, including the home run in the first inning. The 1 1 from Lynn. Well, it's Slinka that time. Two seam fastball going back down and in on Betts. It started out in his zone, but then it, it sunk back into Mookie. Pedroia on deck, two men in scoring position in the top of the fifth inning. One, two to Betts. He would not offer. Lance Lynn, before his Tommy John surgery, was a key member of their rotation. He was an 18 game winner one year. Long look in now steps off the rubber. Can't quite get together with Yadier Molina. Bradley and Marrero on the bases.
fouled away and still two and two. You know it's interesting when you watch Betts and you watch how they attack him you know they they know he can handle the ball inside but they, they when they go inside they try to go way inside to tie him up if they make a mistake and they leave it on the inner third of the plate that's where he does his big damage. One man out. Then finally takes the sign out of 2 2 to Mookie. He's filled it up on him. Once again, trying to go inside with that sinking fastball down and in the bets, not biting. Dustin Pedroia on deck. And here in the fifth inning, the Red Sox with a great opportunity. As hot as Mookie has been, just won the American League Player of the Week. Ground ball to the shortstop. Diaz scoops, fires, and gets him at first base as a run comes in. And the ball game is tied as Jackie Bradley touches home plate. Second RBI of the night for Mookie Betts. And it's a 3 3 game. Now they kept trying to work him inside, and they did actually a pretty good job of it. This is not good solid contact, but you don't need it with the infield back. They're giving you a run. Just make contact, and you pick yourself up a run, and that's exactly what Boot Betts did there. And Marrero advancing to third. So Dustin Pedroia with two down with a base hit here and put the Red Sox back in front. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of flies to right field. They continue to work him away. When you think about it, the pitches have played a factor in this game uh, offensively. You know, Lynn was hit by a pitch in an inning in the third inning where they got three runs. In this inning, the swing by Rodriguez got two men in the scoring position. So tied up 3 3 in the fifth and grounded foul. A ball and a strike now on Dustin. Who has always handled nationally pitching very well. A 341 career average against the National League. That's the highest in the history of interleague play by anybody. Marrero, who reached on the third baseman's error, now at third himself. That one ran in, almost got him on the arm. Lynn has hit a batter. He struck Ben and Teddy with a pitch in the first inning. Sox only have two hits. They've both been homers. Three and one. Bogarts would hit next if Pedroia reaches here in the fifth. Three balls and one strike. Good count for Dustin Pedroia with a man at third, two down. And pop foul back out of play. Fans now through June look for specially marked packages of KM Fenway Franks for your chance to win great Red Sox prizes, like throwing out the ceremonial first pitch at Fenway. Lynn says yes the 3 2 to Pedroia line shot base hit and the Red Sox are back in front that scores Marrero and Pedroia picks up the RBI on a bullet to make it four to three now all this started with a walk and an error a walk and an error for the first two batters and since that time the Red Sox have been able to score a couple of runs. Pedroia with a hard line drive up the middle. On a fastball that's inside. Well, he really does feast on the National League. So the Red Sox lead it 4 3. Xander Bogarts will try and keep the line moving here. A ground out in the first inning, a strikeout in the third inning. 
go back to the early days of September of 2015. Since then, the Red Sox against the National League, 23 and 9. I think one of the first times that many Red Sox fans heard the name Xander Bogarts was in the World Series of 2013 against the St. Louis Cardinal team. At third base. Yep. That's right. I remember thinking watching him then Jerry. Oh this kid's going to walk like a hundred times a year. You know because <laughs> he took some. Some really amazing pitches and took ball four several times you think well that's the kind of hitter he's going to be. And those are the kind of pitches now that he hits for base hits. Yeah. One one lash foul off to the right. Not many left from that 2013 championship Xander and Dustin. One ball and two strikes on Bogarts. With two down, Pedroia leading. Two and two. Now how about the St. Louis Cardinals who are left from that team? Red Sox winning their World Series in six. Here quite a few names. Yeah, a lot of guys left from that uh, 2013 World Series. Names like Waka and, and Wayne Wright. David Ortiz has a new book out and he talks about that series which he hit almost 700. Finally they started walking him. What were they walking four times in game six. It was a little late by then. He talks about how fond they were of their fastballs. The 2 2 filed away. And the patterns they were getting into at least in David's mind were pretty easy for him to pick up but he had spent so much time looking at video. So much time studying that he had really figured out their patterns so that when he got in, it was it was a hit. Or they were going to walk him. He had an amazing series. John Lester, pretty good too, huh? 2 0, 0 5 9. Two two rattle to third base and Jerko up and over. Force play retires the side, but the Red Sox get a couple of runs and they're back in front here in St. Louis. In the middle of the fifth. Mazda driving matters. Franklin Sports, the official batting glove of the Major League Baseball players. 
Ford trucks built Ford tough the official truck of the Boston Red Sox Sullivan tire and complete auto service KM premium Franks at summer let's grill and by Citizens Bank visit citizensbank.com Jerry Remy Dave O'Brien Garen Austin from St. Louis in Bush Stadium where the Red Sox have a 4 3 lead here into the bottom half of the fifth inning. Top of the Red Sox order doing some damage Mookie Betts with two more RBIs including a homer Dustin Pedroia just put the Red Sox out of that two spot back in front with a hard RBI single that one torch nice scoop by Marrero at third and he gets some very soft hands over there. Yeah he's given the Red Sox uh, some well needed defense down at third base since he's been getting stocks and most of the balls he's been making plays on have been going to his right. Right there you'll see Marrero has to quickly backhand that ball good quick hands as that ball was headed to bounce over his glove but that's why you went from the ground up with your glove get as low to the ground as possible and go up it's much easier than going back down to try to catch a, a ground ball. Tommy Pham the batter he's driven in a run with a sacrifice and grounded out to third Brock Holt has been trying to make his way back with a minor league rehab stint he's been battling those vertigo symptoms things were looking good until just yesterday then he had to come out of the lineup late in the game because of uh, recurrence of those symptoms. So right now looks like it's going to be Marrero for the foreseeable future at third base. And defensively he's making a difference. Carpenter on deck one man out Red Sox leading 4 3 last of the fifth and fouled away. We talk about the top of the Red Sox batting order. It's been the same each of the last nine games Betts Pedroia Bogarts and Benintendi although Benintendi lately has been slumping. But over the first eight of those games the Red Sox with that shuffled lineup. That's going to be a swing and a miss and fam goes down on strikes. They've been averaging almost seven runs a game. And there are two down. The change up that time from Rodriguez a completely fooled fan. Tried to hold up the swing but couldn't do it. Change up down in the zone or. Either that it was either the change up or the slider. I was tough to tell sometimes it's tough to tell with a slider because it doesn't break very much his fourth strikeout brings up Carpenter well, that's the slider right there that uh, did break down and away from Carpenter he could really use a clean inning the one nothing line shot but that's going to be a fair ball right on the chalk line kicks back to Betts Carpenter wants second Mookie's throw on target he's out Mookie Betts cutting him down at second base Carpenter erased what an outstanding throw end of five four three Red Sox.
Ecom presented by Capital One Banking Reimagine. Uh, the quick uh, spin and accurate throw by Mookie Betts. And it, you know, looked like a no contest double. And then you look up, Betts has got the ball spinning around, making the throw. And Betts, uh, you know, as we said during in between innings, what can't he do? I mean, he just does it all. Tonight showing off the power with the home run, then driving in a, a second run with a ground out. And a sensational throw from the Gold Glover. And his starting pitcher very appreciative. Yeah, loves that, doesn't he? Sixth inning, Red Sox leading 4 3 here in St. Louis. Ben and looking to snap an 0 for 20. Tonight, Andrew has been hit by a pitch and he's reached on an error. So it is five straight games without a hit, and that is a career high for the young major leaguer. Been a lot of soft stuff away that has been getting him out lately. Yeah, change up that time. Had him well out on his front foot. And he had a couple of slumps like this in the minors. If you look at his minor league numbers, he didn't stay in a slump <laughs> for very long. Uh, the, you know what it, that happens up here is they just experiment and they try to find something you know something some way to get you out. And right now it's with a lot of off speed pitches. Two one from Lynn. All even now and they're really good at exploiting it when they find it. Yeah then you have to make the adjustment you know <laughs> the adjustment. It's it just it just goes back and forth. Moreland on deck Red Sox up by a run and a lazy fly ball to shallow right center field coming in center fielder Fowler tomorrow at seven don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood available at men's warehouse will bring you part one of my interview with Tim McCarver Had a good time doing that this afternoon Tim Cena whole lot in his baseball life and he remembers a whole lot it's, his memory is incredible it really is all of you guys are like that I, I found that major league ball players generally have ridiculous memories well there's certain things that stick out you know and, and the, 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 the moments that you don't forget the rest of your life uh, they have some kind of meaning at that particular time in your career and you just always remember them but you never let go of it. I mean, it's there. I mean, some of the stuff he's talking about, he remembered. And I guess this makes sense, but he's 17 years old. He's playing minor league baseball for one of 24 Cardinal minor league teams. Sure. Think about that. How many minor league teams? And the umpire behind home plate is Brent Musburger. I, I couldn't believe that. I, I had no idea of that. Your first question was, did you get into it with him? <laughs> <laughs> Tim's a great guy. Marvelous broadcaster. He's in the Hall of Fame for broadcasting in Cooperstown. So many World Series and great moments. We look forward to the rest of your interview with him. It's great stuff. Huge favorite here in St. Louis. Where of course he played. Top foul by Moreland who's gone over two. I know one of the questions I asked him when he was doing the national games the World Series games that you know half the country hated you half the country liked you because they, they always felt like you were against their club you know and it was <laughs> he said some of the mail he used to get and it was unbelievable. The fact of the matter is he loves Boston. Oh he does he absolutely does. And yet uh, yeah I'll, I'll bet some of that mail came from Boston two two and down he goes hacking. So Moreland is 0 for 3. Take a listen from earlier today. Bob hated pitch outs. Right. And so we were, we were, and Johnny Keene would give the pitch out from the bench was always the open hand. So I gave him the pitch out and Bob went, and then I gave it to him again and he went, no. <laughs> I gave it to him the third time. I'm doing what the manager wants me to do. And he said, you're not going to throw him out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the great Bob Gibson. 
<laughs> You're not going to throw him out anyway. I think Bob Bob did things his own way. Apparently. And, and it was pretty darn good. Yes. Christian Vasquez has struck out twice tonight. Two away in the Sox sixth inning. And now he's behind 0-2. He reaches Jackie Bradley with bad next. Jackie's launched a home run tonight. As did Mookie Betts. Cardinals have been charged with two errors. And Lance Lynn with the 0 2. Rick Porcello tomorrow night at 8 15. These games are beginning a little bit later here in St. Louis. Not an 0 5 or a 10 past the hour start. They start at 15 after. Here comes the 1 2. Launched foul out of play to the right. Lynn 6'5, 275 pounds. Survivor of Tommy, Tommy John surgery. And the 1 2 pitch now to Vasquez. Got a piece of it. Well, there's a lot of catching talent in that batting circle between these two. Kind of a nightmare if you're a base stealer. You know, even if you know you can get a good jump off the pitcher, they they are the kind of ha guys that have the ability to eliminate that slow move to home plate by the pitchers. They can erase that in a heartbeat. Time is called. Vasquez with something in his eye there. Well, tonight, 99 pitches for Lynn. No activity in their bullpen. Sox pen also quiet. Matheny, a very fine catcher in his own right. One ball and two strikes on Vasquez. And he popped him up. Shallow right, racing in Gritchick. He's got it. And the Red Sox go quietly in this inning. One, two, three. We're in the middle of the sixth, four, three, Boston.
reason why the Red Sox and the rest of America run on Duncan because Duncan's iced coffee is consistently smooth and delicious. Duncan Donuts coffee the number one coffee in New England Boston Red Sox run on Duncan. Bottom of the sixth inning activity in the bullpen for the Cardinals hard throwing big guy Jonathan Broxton former Dodger. Cardinals coming up. Now Lynn's spot is not due up in this inning but his pitch count is high. That's why they have activity in the bullpen Jerko the leadoff man he has singled and flied out. He'll be followed by Molina and then Diaz. One strike on Jerko. Led the Cardinals with 30 home runs last year he's hit seven so far this season. Went for a high one. And he's in the hole 0 2. Jerko played all four infield positions last year and homered while playing all of those spots. That's down to the dirt. And 23 of his home runs came after the All Star break. Not enough to put the Cardinals into postseason play. They barely missed out. That is a rarity in this part of the country. Matheny and company usually in it. They intend to be again this year. Cardinals have won the World Series 11 times. Twice against the Sox. Red Sox have beaten them twice in the World Series. A lot of titles. Here in St. Louis 2 2 from Rodriguez. High twisting foul out of play. Everybody that comes through St. Louis and plays here just absolutely loves playing here. Fans are so loyal. Hey, you're right. I've, rever I've never really heard a player who has worn the Cardinal uniform talk about regretting playing here. And. Baseball is so popular here. The fans are so friendly. They're so nice. Another big crowd. I mean, they regularly draw three million a year, three million plus. They're in the postseason all the time. Two two. It's a very very well run organization from the top down. They're just to. Uh, just a very stable organization. And now Matheny at the helm of the dugout. 2 2 to Jerko. He lifts a fly ball into left center, not deep, racing out Bogarts. Bradley coming in, so is Benatendi. Benatendi takes it. So one away. Time now for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store, the Boston Red Sox. Here's TC. Tom thank you Yankees with a half game lead over the Orioles although Baltimore has been sliding they've lost four straight. Sox at the moment four games off the pace punch foul out of play by Molina who's gone over two. Molina hit 307 last year fifth time in his career he's hit over 300. And the 0 1 is up top for a ball. Now the Red Sox have double barrel activity. Scott and Taylor. Eduardo Rodriguez spot to hit is third in the 
following inning makes a nice play to get down and get that in the underhand flip to get Molina two down. Well, handling his position very well right there was uh, Rodriguez. And not an easy play because that ball stayed low to the ground. Usually the easier ones to pitches are the ones that bounce up, but this one staying fairly low to the ground, so that's not an easy play at all. None of them back to the box are easy, but you know, you prefer them high bounces, not low bounces. Belenmas Diaz, the shortstop, has walked in, struck out. Ground ball and a base hit. No play for Marrero there. And Diaz is on with two down. Tonight after the Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports today, get a preview of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Celtics and the Cavs. Nesson Sports today is presented by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. Richick will be next. He's flied out and walked. Two forty four with four home runs for their right fielder. He'll take the first one low for ball one. Red Sox with one more left here in St. Louis tomorrow night four in Oakland and the Red Sox come back home to face a hot Texas Rangers team which has won six straight. They've come to life. Ball two. Well, the Orioles have blown an early lead, and now the Tigers lead them 8 7 in the bottom of the eighth inning at Detroit. If the Orioles lose, that'll be five straight for them. Tried to hold up, but it's in there for a strike anyway. Houston's already won again. They pounded on the Marlins 12 to 2. That Astros team, you don't want to face them right now. A strike. 2 and 2. Right, picking up that outside corner with a 92 mile an hour fastball questioned by Grichik. Well, 108 pitches for the left hander Rodriguez looks like his last inning fouled away that got a piece of Vasquez two balls two strikes been typical for Eduardo the six innings he has not pitched longer than that this season. This is it for him. This will be his fifth consecutive six inning start. Red Sox up 4 3, two down, and a 2 2 to Gritchick. Down he goes swinging. Side retired, one man left. We move on to the seventh. Red Sox up by one.
is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. So it looks like both sides are going to make a pitching change here as we go to the top half of the seventh inning. Red Sox ahead in St. Louis 4 3. Lance Lynn is done for the night. His pitching line brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers as he went six. He allowed two earned runs, four runs totally through exactly 100 pitches, giving way to Jonathan Broxton. Big righty. Jackie Bradley in, and Jackie taking a strike. Broxton can bring it, but a high ERA right now. Look at all those hits 15 hits in 11 innings. It's also nine, a walk now. Yeah, nine walks and nine strikeouts in 11 innings. Bradley tonight with a home run, a walk. He has scored two times. Perhaps a sign that he's getting that swing of his back in good working order. Now Molina out for a conversation. This is what we saw all day on Sunday, Jerry. We, we saw more conversations on Sunday. That might have been the worst game that I've done in 30 years. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Really? It was awful. Four hours and 33 minutes. But the weather was miserable. And the final score was 11 to 2. It was actually a pretty close game most of the day. So that was misleading. But that, but even when it was close, it didn't feel like a good game. No. No, you're right. It was very strange. A ponderous pace doesn't come close to describing that. <laughs> In four hours and 33 minutes, if you didn't see the game, you'd say, well, that game went 15 innings, right? No, it was nine innings. It's amazing. One two line drive base hit to left. I like to see that. I love to see that from Bradley. That's a great sign that he's popping out of things. You know where did he go for the home run the opposite field. Then he walks. What does he do now. Hard line drive the other way. That means he's keeping his front shoulder and his head on the baseball. There's that good solid contact. You can stand uh, stand back a little bit longer. Good head discipline. And taking that line drive to the opposite field for the base hit. So how do you play it now? You get Marrero coming up, 0 for 2. Jackie Bradley leads active major leaguers in career stolen base success rate at 92 percent. Well, There's a couple of options. You know, you go straight out steal. You go a little hit and run action. As you get the pitcher not going to hit, so you know you might be able to force the action here. At the bottom of the lineup. Yeah, Young Chris Young on. is in the on deck area. Yeah, he's come out on deck. So he will hit in Rodriguez spot. Molina setting up away. Runner holding. And he's bunning. Got it down. Broxon will immediately go to first base. Into second base is Jackie Bradley. So a sacrifice bunt is how the Red Sox went. Stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Plain Ridge Park Casino. TC Eck and Steve highlight the key moment of tonight's game and preview Rick Porcello's start tomorrow here in St. Louis. So Marrero with the sacrifice. Red Sox have another runner down scoring position for Chris Young. Rodriguez helped himself in the fifth inning. He did not bunt. He swung away, hit a little dribbler out in front of the plate. Molina picked it up and threw him out at first base. It had the effect of a sacrifice bunt. Red Sox went on to score twice in that inning. That's a strike. That's something that pitchers practice all the time, right? You know, take a big swing and make it look like a bunt. <laughs> <laughs> this is a swing that's you know designed to hit at 500 yeah. feet. I was just worried the ball was going to hit him as it went down the first baseline. It, it almost did, but it had the effect of a bunt. Bradley at second, one out. Tried to hold up, but he went swinging a miss, and it's 0-2 on Chris. Well, 
Does have three home runs in his career as a pinch hitter. Red Sox ahead 4 3. We're in the seventh. And the 0-2 pitch from Broxton. Good cut there, but he fouled it back. Yeah, still good velocity from Broxton, too. 96 miles an hour on the fastball. Maybe not as hard as it once was, but still very, very decent. Bets to hit next. He has two RBIs tonight. He's hit a home run. Down low blocked by the eight time gold glover Molina. And Jackie could not advance. Hembry and Scott warming in the bullpen for the Red Sox. They have both been very effective. Red Sox would love to get this game to Craig Kimbrell, who could not be pitching better. And the one two. High pop up to center. Fowler coming in. Jackie Bradley will have to stay at second base. And there are two down. Fans, be sure to stop by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Plain Ridge Park Casino, 45 minutes from Boston. And now Mookie Betts. He's been trouble again for an opponent with a home run in the first inning leading off the game. That's the 10th career leadoff home run for Betts. He has tied the Red Sox all time record. Tying Jacoby Ellsbury in that category. He's also grounded out to drive and run so two RBIs for Mookie. So he's gotten another week off to an excellent start. He's the reigning American League player of the week. Not only that, he is gunned a runner down at second base with a terrific throw to Nail Carpenter trying to make a single, a double. That doesn't get much better than that defensively. Two down, Bradley leading at second. And the 0 1 for Broxton. You know, one of the reasons Mookie's so good in the outfield playing ground balls. Uh, of, you know that a hit to him or playing him off the wall. He takes ground balls during batting practice at shortstop, and he'll throw a lot of you know take some ground balls and make a lot of throws to first base. So he's he's maintaining those quick feet that he had as a second baseman, and he's taking it right to the outfield with. Him. One one a strike. So Broxton ahead in the count with two down. Dustin Pedroia has an RBI to put the Red Sox in the lead that was in the fifth inning. He's on deck. One two to Betts. Ground ball to the shortstop. Diaz plucks that. And gets him. So the Red Sox can't score that run. Still a tight one here in St. Louis.
is brought to you by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Toyota's website for deals, buyatoyota.com. Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. Subaru Retailers of New England. Old Dominion Freight Lines helping the world keep promises. And by Eastern Bank. Join us for good. Red Sox in front here by one run as we go to the last half of the seventh inning at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And Robbie Scott coming on to pitch. And look at that minuscule ERA for Robbie 0 0.96. 14 of his 16 appearances this year have been scoreless. And they bring him on to take on Colton Wong, who is singled and flied out. Then the pitcher spot due up. They'll have a batter in that number nine hole, followed by Dexter Fowler, the leadoff man. Wong with just one home run on the year, showing bunt, and he takes a ball. So Eduardo Rodriguez went the first six. He can win it. Quality start, three runs, five hits allowed. Tried to pull that bun along with him, but he fouls it away. Ace ticket bringing you the pitching line of Eduardo Rodriguez. Five strikeouts, 110 pitches. And we talk about it all the time. We saw the attempted at bunt for a base hit right there, and you know. He got fooled on the breaking ball that time. Trying to take the ball with him down the first baseline and the breaking ball messed them all up. Now the pinch hitter will be Greg Garcia. He is on deck. The 2 1 to Wong. Now three balls and a strike. So a hitter's count for Wong. And Scott with a 3 1. Strike. Now, Marrero is part of the overshift around to the right side of second base, along with Pedroia and Moreland. Yeah, the possibility to bunt off with two strikes, they go under the shift. Scott's 3 2. Ground ball into that shift. There's Pedroia to gobble it up. Good job by Scott coming back from a 3 1 count to get him. Yeah, very good pitch. He got in his kitchen that time. He got a fastball inside. We check out the results of our Dunkin' Donuts poll question tonight. Are you a fan of the two game series, such as the Red Sox are playing here in St. Louis? Almost 80% of you are not. Uh, folks are accustomed to a three game series. Four-game series, a little too long. Hey, you you say the seven-game series the is what seven-game series is the perfect series. You know you've done something well. Red Sox hoping they will have such an opportunity here in 2017. Here's Garcia announces the pinch hitter. Career as a pinch hitter, pretty good. 328 with two home runs. Mike Matheny trying to catch some lightning in a bottle here. Red Sox ahead 4 3 in the seventh. This one now in the hands of the bullpens. Fowler on deck. That's what makes Scott tough. The way he drops down to the side to throw both the fastball and the breaking ball. He has been quite effective. And the two strike pitch.
Come the eighth inning, the Red Sox will have due up. Pedroia, Bogarts, and Benintendi against the Cardinal Pen. And the left hander with a 1 2. Off the outside, even up the count. So a couple of right handers throwing in their bullpen. I could say Rosenthal. To evaluate. Also loosening. Tui Vailua. We're going to go with that. I tell you, this team has got some tough, tough names to do. You got a few. Magnari Sierra. Suwon O. We talked about Grichik. Sokulovic out there. Miguel Sokulovic. I mean, there's some landmines. 3 2. He got a piece of it and fouled it away. Four runs, only four hits for the Sox tonight. They've been helped by two cardinal errors. Three and two to count on Garcia. But the base is empty, one away. And chop foul. He's a tough out here. Yeah, he's hanging tough on some pretty tough pitches by by Scott. The CBS Health Charity Classic is added a two day family friendly food festival. Crave Rhode Island June 15 and 16 at the Dunkin Donuts Center in Providence. For tickets and information visit CBS Health Charity Classic dot com. And the three two once again. And he walks him. Garcia earned that. He's on with one out representing the tying run. Now well, Henry's loose down of the bullpen. Let's see if they make a move to Henry with the right hand of Fowler coming up. Let's follow a switch hitter. About the same from both sides of the plate. Dexter Fowler now. He could be a dangerous man. He doubled in a run in the third inning. He's one for three. And the first pitch, a strike. I think one of the uh, one of the things that comes into play here, all of his power comes from the left side of the plate. He's got four home runs on the season. They have all hit, uh, but on the left side. He became the first player in World Series history to lead off a game seven with a home run. Did that for the Cubs. He'll take a ball in one and one. Signed a big five year contract here in St. Louis. Cubs have been a team scuffling early on. They're leading Cincinnati tonight that pitch outside. Cardinals playing the same division. Right now the Cubs are in fourth place at 18 and 19. They've lost seven out of ten. Red Sox beat him two out of three at Fenway. Runner at first base and Garcia back in. Two and one on Fowler. He's homered four times. Scott with a two one. He's gone deep again. Three and one to count. Only walked Garcia after a long battle. Tommy Pham on deck. Four three Boston seventh inning.
The 3 1 to Fowler. High pop up. Foul ground off first. Moreland racing near the tarp, battling it. He makes the play. Two down. Yeah, quite a bit of foul territory in this ballpark as you look down the first base and third base line. And originally, I thought that ball was going to be out of play, but uh, actually, plenty of room for Moreland to make it. And we will have a pitching change now. Here's Marlin going back to the top, takes a peek, see how much rooms he's got, and he's able to make the play with about five feet to spare. So John Farrell is going to go get Heath Embry with Fam coming up. Two down here in the seventh inning, a man on. Red Sox ahead 4 3, and we'll have more in just a moment. Softball teams to be part of our live studio audience for Nesson Clubhouse. Enter your son or daughter's team by visiting NessonClubhouse.com. Click the studio audience button for your chance to win this once in a lifetime opportunity. Here's Heath Embry now. Coming off a rough outing, you allowed a season high, five hits and four runs in a third of an inning Sunday against Tampa Bay. Those are the first earned runs that he had allowed at Fenway Park going back to last September. Garcia the runner at first base with two down Sox up 4 3 here in the seventh inning Embry trying to protect that and fam the batter he's driven in a run with a sacrifice tonight Garcia at first base jumping around a little bit over there trying to get to, I don't know if he's trying to time Henry or just try to upset his concentration but he's been kind of dancing back and forth. Starts him up and in with a breaking ball for ball one with the curve. Matt Carpenter on deck for the Cardinals. They get all of their runs in one inning in the third against Eduardo Rodriguez, who can still win it. Up the middle, Pedroia there with a backhand feeds Bogarts. He tiptoes to the bag for the force play to retire the side. That ball was hit stiff, but the Red Sox made the play. Boston still in front by one.
Franklin family batting glove member this season. Franklin Sports is donating to the Red Sox Foundation's RBI program that helps revitalize baseball and softball in our inner cities. Franklin Sports is a proud partner of the Red Sox Foundation and Major League Baseball. So Sam Tu Tui Tui, what is it again, Jerry? Tui Valala. Tui Valala will make an appearance. His seventh of the year, 129 ERA. Tui Valala will take on Pedroia, Bogarts, and Benintendi. So the spelling on that is T U I V A I L A L A. And Pedroia, one for three with an RBI single. It could be Tui Vale Lala, but it's not. It's Tui Valala. And we listened in on a pronunciation by the, the public address announcer here in St. Louis. Because he's got to be getting it right, right? The 0 1. And on the corner with a breaking ball. Pedroia putting the Red Sox in the lead with that fifth inning single. When you got one of those names that barely gets all the way across the jersey on the back of that jersey, the 0 2 is outside. The Tui Valala is throwing 97 miles an hour, so he. In other words, he said, "You get to know my name because I've got. I'm going to bring some heat." Yeah. And a one-two. Toward right, on the move, Grichik had to make an adjustment. Come back to his left and make the play. One man gone here in the eighth inning. The Sox will have four different start times over the course of this road trip. Don't miss a road game and import the Nesson Red Sox calendar into your favorite desktop, web, or mobile calendar today. You'll get automatic updates, game reminders, and much more. Visit Nesson.com slash schedule to import the schedule today. Red Cecil throwing in their bullpen, a left-hander. And Xander Bogarts has gone 0 for 3 tonight. He has grounded out, hit into a forced play. He's also struck out. Xander started all six games of the 2013 World Series against St. Louis. And here in the games at Bush Stadium, he went 5 for 11. Red Sox facing Tui Valala for the first time. And the 1 1. Breaking ball in there. Benintendi on deck, so we'll see if they go to the bullpen again. Here's the 1 2. Lunging out, pops it toward right. That'll dunk down for a base hit. Isn't that a beautiful thing? His first hit tonight. Xander is on. He can do that with the best of him. I mean, he just throws the barrel of the bat at the baseball when the pitch is away like that. And he gets more base hits to the opposite field like that than anybody I think I've ever seen. He has tremendous plate coverage. I mean, look at this. I mean, you know, the backside's gone, everything's gone. Except the barrel of the bat is, is is covering the plate, and he just drops it in for a base hit. So they'll go to the left-hander to face Benintendi. Red Sox with uh, another run potentially on at first base, up by one.
Well, here's the veteran left-hander Brett Cecil spent a lot of years with the Toronto Blue Jays. And they have him picked off. Bogart's trying to get down to second, but he's going to be tagged out. No, oh, he got in there. He's ruled safe. Not sure how, but he is safe at second base. Now, that is one advantage of using the head for a slide. You can have those hands swimming all over the place. And look how he reaches across with the right hand to get the bag. And he's asking for the safe call. They're waiting for him. He slides the hand around. Now there's a tag it on the body before the hand gets on there. It's something they're going to look at, I think. They are going to challenge this. Well, he made a heck of a play to get in there. Watch from this angle. That is very close. I think he may be safe. I think he might have got that, that hand, that right hand in there. Before the tag came and got him. That's that's one of the advantages of the head first slide. Head first slide is a very dangerous slide, but you can make adjustments on that slide. You know, by just swimming with your hands. We see Pedroia do it all the time. Now Bogots does it. Yeah, that's a marvelous effort. It really is. I think he got in there. I do too. So they're looking at this in New York. The play is under review. Challenged by Matheny. Xander Bogarts swimming his way to second base. Reaching with that right hand. Looked like he was dead to rights. He was picked off by Cecil. Now what he was doing, he was going on the very first move from Cecil. You know, as soon as he picked up any part of his body started to pick it up and he's safe he took off to go and then the wise thing is, is he continued to go you know don't stop and get caught in a rundown make him throw you because they may hit you in the back or you may get a slide like this he's just guessing right there he's going on first pitch first move but what an adjustment right at the end by by Bogarts very cagey play he winds up with a stolen base and that's a big big run out there for the Red Sox are on top 4 3 here in the eighth inning. If Benintendi can drive him in. It'll be a two run cushion. Benintendi hit by pitch he's reached on an error He's also fly to center. One and one the attendance tonight here in St. Louis forty one thousand five hundred and fourteen. See the Red Sox come back to the gateway to the West. Check swing and the count two and one. Benintendi trying to snap it over 21. Has a chance to drive in. The fifth run of the night for the Red Sox is the 2 1 from the lefty. Bounced up there, blocked by Molina. Oh, what a play by Molina to keep uh, Bogarts off third base with, with a one out. That ball bounced well out in front of the plate, still able to take it off the chest protector and get it bouncing back toward the infield. Actually, it was not the chest protector, it was the glove that he got on it. Good count for Benintendi, but he's going to take high ball four. So Red Sox have runners at first and second. And Moreland is striding up to swing. Tomorrow at 7.30, don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU, TC, Dennis, and Steve. Preview Rick Porcello start tomorrow night here in St. Louis. DCU is Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Moreland has been quiet in this one. 0 for 3. He is 0 for his last 14. Red Sox with a pair of home runs tonight. Mookie Betts and Jackie Bradley. Jackie's had a very good night with a home run, a walk, and a single.
Down low for ball two. Mitch Moreland homered in his most recent game in St. Louis. It was June of last year when he was a member of the Texas Rangers. Bogarts and Benintendi on the bases. Ball three. So Kolovich, the right-hander now loosening in their ballpen. And Molina taking a very, very slow walk out to the pitcher's mound. There'll be another conference here, and the home plate umpire Will Little is right behind him. And breaks it up quickly. Count of three and nothing now on Moreland. Sox got solo runs in the first and second, two more in the fifth. Cardinals got all three of theirs in the third. One man out, man the three nothing. That is ball four, and that's going to load up the bases. All filled up now for Vasquez. Here comes Matheny. So Kolovich will be brought in to face Christian Vasquez who might be able to put this game on ice here in the eighth inning with a big hit. Red Sox have them all filled up with one away leading by a run. We have another pitching change in St. Louis back with more in just a moment. Brought to you by Old Dominion. Uh, Xander Bogart's living on the edge. I mean, that ball's about six inches outside. He's able to reach out, punch it for the base hit. Then he takes off first move from the pitcher, gets picked off, but makes a tremendous slide at second base, wrapping the right arm around and becomes safe. Old Dominion helping the world keep promises. Looked like he was going to be out by 15 feet, but a terrific piece. Of sliding creativity. And now he is 90 feet away. He's at third. Benintendi at second. Moreland at first. Sokolovich coming out of the bullpen. High ERA here, too, 6.75. Lots of hits allowed. The Red Sox only need one. Vasquez will dig in. He struck out twice. He's also fly to right field. 4 3 Red Sox, eighth inning. One down, bases jammed. And no place to put the Red Sox catcher. 
First pitch will be in there for strike one. That was a slider at 82 miles an hour. Five hits for the Red Sox, five for St. Louis. So it has not been a hit fest tonight in game one. Sokolovich picks out a side and now comes the 0 1. He bounced it. Another nice play by Molina behind the plate. I mean, saved the run right there. Again, that ball bouncing way out in front of Molina. Tried to change up, threw it directly down in the dirt. Bogart's the key man. Benintendi is second. Moreland who just took a walk on at first back to back walks here by the St. Louis Relief Corps. Red Sox trying to bust it open in the eighth. And here's the 1 1 pitch to Vasquez. That's a strike. Vasquez doesn't think so. He thought it missed high. Yeah, I thought it was a high changeup that didn't get the strike zone. Jackie Bradley on deck. One ball and two strikes, one out. They lead all the way around, and here it comes. He lunges at it, pops it up. Coming on Fowler. Bogarts at third. He's going to try and score. Here's the throw to the plate. He is safe. Throw down to third. Not in time there. Xander Bogarts charging in. He spent most of this inning on his stomach. It's a great result for the Red Sox who lead at 5 3. Yeah, when that ball left the bat, I didn't think it was going to be deep enough to get a run home, but the Red Sox being very, very aggressive. I mean, look at where uh, Fowler is. He's very shallow. He's charging the ball, but they're going to test his arm, and it becomes no test at home plate. Good job by Benettoni to get the third base. Oh, God, it's been all over the place this inning. Yeah, and absolutely filthy. And then loving every minute of it. Benettoni going second or third on the throw. Now Jackie Bradley big night for Jackie with two hits a home run a walk. He has scored twice. Red Sox grinding out that run a single a stolen base certainly looked like Bogarts was going to be cut down on the pickoff. He got in and Benintendi with a walk Moreland with a walk and now a sack fly by Vasquez to pretty shallow right center. Jackie Bradley with a home run back in the second inning. And that home run for Bradley going to the opposite field. The first of two tonight to the opposite field. The second one was a line drive base hit. First and third, two down, and now the 1 1 to Jackie. It is Matt Barnes warming in the bullpen. Certainly what the Red Sox have in mind is a bridge to Kimbrell. A 5-3 Boston lead and the 1-2 to JBJ. And a high pop into left along the line. Fam over near the stands very close and dropped it. He knocked it into fair territory. Benintendi has scored. Here's a play at the plate. And out at home is Moreland. What a crazy play that was. As Pham mishandled it down the line. Benintendi able to score. Moreland cut down. I mean, this just this play is just in fair territory. The ball's in fair territory when he knocks it down and drops it. That's going to give the Red Sox a gift run, but they do throw out Moreland. 
for the second run. Red Sox on top here six to three in the middle of the eighth inning. Red Sox another run they've been helped out by three errors by St. Louis here tonight and now Heath Embry coming out of the bullpen. So he works his second inning take another look here. Fam is in foul ground. Yeah but the ball's in fair territory right back over his head. Yeah. But his feet were in foul territory. Yeah that doesn't matter it's, it's where the baseball is. Right. And of course uh, he drops it. It's a fair ball. Red Sox pick up one run. They do throw out ball at the plate. So sloppy play by the Cardinals. He reached back over his head into fair territory. Right. And the umpire down at third base line, James Hoy, signaled the ball fair. So Hembry into his second frame will take on Carpenter, Jerko, and Molina here in the eighth inning. And the first pitch will be outside on Carpenter, who's gone one for two tonight and has driven in a run. So Carpenter at 257, eight home runs, very good power. Red Sox with a three run lead. I think the biggest problem there with the left fielder, Pham, was that he overran the ball. And had a lot of trouble with it, but again, they've committed three errors. Typically a pretty good defensive team. The Red Sox conversely have played some really good defense. And he'll miss outside to Carpenter. Red Sox looking to start this six game trip with a victory. And the 2 1. And in there for a called strike. So Henry becomes the second man out of the bullpen. Eduardo Rodriguez went six. He is the pitcher of record. So he can pick up his second win of the season here tonight. He allowed three runs, five hits. Jerko on deck. Here comes the 2 2 pitch now to Carpenter. Been one of their steadier hitters. He'll take a low, 3 and 2. with a payoff pitch. Did he check? That's a swing and a miss strike three. So he committed. They appealed quickly to James Hoy and he rung him up. So one man gone. Yeah I don't think there's any question that was a swing right there. Surprised by Henry going to the three two slider. 
in that full conference and we'll take a look from the side. There's no question that was a swing. So Henry fans his first man here in the eighth inning. And Jed Jerko next he's flat out singled and flat out again one for three tonight. As you see plus power there with seven home runs. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Orioles and Tigers have gone to the 11th inning. They're tied up 8 8. Yankees have a big lead in the ninth inning, 7 1 on Kansas City. One and one. And Hembry misses up and away. Two balls, one strike. Molina next. Certainly been an interesting game one here in St. Louis with some twists and turns. That disappears two and two the count. Yeah I think that's a great way to put it. There really hasn't been a flow to this game but there's been a lot of crazy things happening in it. Let's put it this way a lot more has happened in this three hours than happened in four and a half hours on Sunday. <laughs> a lot more to two poke foul out of play. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nothing happened. Nothing. I mean, you try to analyze a game and announce a game, and you're sitting there making stuff up because nothing's happening. <laughs> it's brutal. We made a lot of stuff up Sunday. We were on the air for six days. <laughs> and a lot of rain. 2-2. Two -two. Spoiled again. And Kimbrell starting to loosen up in the Sox pen. Been absolutely automatic. We're in the last half of the eighth. Embry with a 2 2. Popped him up. Center fielder Bradley there. Jackie has an eye on it. Two down. Wednesday. May 24th is Craig Kimbrell bobblehead night at Fenway. First 12,000 fans in attendance receive a Kimbrell bobblehead presented by Enios. For tickets and more information, visit redsox.com slash promos. Kimbrell, by the way, with 11 saves. Two down Molina. Has gone 0 for 3. And the count nothing in one. Sox have had a lot of success against the National League. Line drive and Pedroia with a leap can't get it. Be a base hit for Molina. His first of the night. And Molina came into the game with a six game hitting streak. Looks like that was going to be shut down, but he picks up a base hit in this with two outs in the eighth inning. It's a slider that time, and the line shot right up over the glove of Dustin Pedroyer at second base. Here's Diaz. He's walked, struck out, single tonight. Strike one. Cardinals have gone ahead in hits, but only by six to five. The pitching has been pretty darn good. Cardinal defense is not with three errors. Fastball just missing, according to Little. Like a pretty good pitch, one ball, one strike. Mm -hmm. 
Richick on deck. Molina the base runner with two down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a pop up. On the infield Marrero says he has it fair territory will retire the side no runs a hit one left on to the ninth Red Sox leading it in St. Louis by three. to you by Xfinity as we move on to the ninth inning Red Sox ahead six to three Erod with a chance for the victory he went six innings uh, another quality start for him Mookie Betts with his seventh home run Jackie Bradley with a good night at the plate and Lance Lynn going six his defense let him down a little bit four runs but only two of those earned and they've made three errors behind the Cardinal pitching staff. Now Devin Marrero about to lead off the ninth. And then Hanley Ramirez in the on deck area. Hanley to bat in a nine spot. And Marrero in this one is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. They did reach in the fifth inning on one of their errors. This one on the third baseman, Jerko, and he came in to score. So Red Sox have had a couple of gifts tonight courtesy of the Cardinals. There's a liner down the right field line slicing but a foul ball. Somebody made a nice play down there. Looks like he's got a, a catcher's bit too. Is that a catcher's bit? Yeah, I believe it is. Put to good use. I don't see many catchers miss brought to games, do you? No. Might not be a bad idea. Well, if you're a catcher yourself, the 0 2 and a base hit knocked into left field. So Marrero's aboard to start the ninth inning. And Hanley Ramirez will be announced. That's been a nice night for Marrero you know made a pretty good play down at third base got on an error in the uh, fifth inning had a sacrifice in the seventh and now a base hit in the ninth. Hanley has reached base safely 14 of his last 15 games hitting over 300. Out of the lineup tonight until now is a pinch hitter. 
with Moreland playing first base in the National League City. Mookie bets on deck. Hits her even at six. A leadoff man on in the ninth. And the first one in there for strike one at 92. Miguel Sokolovic. Their fourth reliever to be employed tonight by Matheny. And a one strike pitch to Hanley. To the third baseman Jerko to second that's one. Low throw but they turn two. So two gone in the ninth. That was Taylor made and Betts is next with the bases empty. Game two tomorrow night right here on Nesson. Rick Porcello against Mike Leak and then the Red Sox will be winging it. Out to Oakland California and four games against the A's first meeting with the athletics. Mookie Betts has driven in a pair of runs tonight a home run and an RBI ground out. He's also made a dazzling defensive play with a throw. And a one nothing that'll miss for a ball. Fernando Abad joining Craig Kimbrell. Right now a save situation for Kimbrell. Called strike two and one. Yeah, I think the only way you would see Kimbrell not in this ball game is if the Red Sox were able to tack on some runs right here. Remains a three run ball game. You'll see Kimbrell. Fouled back in two and two on bets. With a victory, the Red Sox would improve to two games over 500. Pedroia next. Should it get there far, but there are two away. Two two. And all filled up on Mookie Betts. Some history for Mookie in the very first inning with that home run. He tied Jacoby Ellsbury for the most leadoff home runs. In Red Sox history with 10. 3 2. Popped up. Long with a play in short right field. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Kimbrell coming on, looking to lock this one down. The Red Sox up 6 to 3 in St. Louis.
that for the Jimmy Fund again this year. Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. The only choice for untouchable furniture value. Available in store or at mybobs.com. Kimbrell looking for his 12th, the 6 to 3 Red Sox lead as we're off to the last half of the ninth inning. He'll get the bottom third of the order here for the Cardinals. Red Sox scored a couple of big runs, some helping hands too for St. Louis in the eighth inning. There's a key error on a ball dropped down the left field line by Pham, the left fielder. Richick will lead things off. He has flied out, walked, and struck out tonight. It's a high twisting fly ball to right field. Very playable here for Betts. Moving toward the line for out number one. One pitch, one gone. I think that's the approach to take against Kimbrell, too. Why wait to get to two strikes? He's going to strike you out. Over his last five appearances coming into tonight, he had struck out 13 of the last 15 men he faced. First pitch, fastball, I'm swinging. And he has now retired. 21 of the last 22 he's faced over seven games. He pounds in strike one at 97 on Colton Wong. One out base is empty bottom of the ninth and strike two. Matt Adams is on deck. He'll hit in the nine hole. Oh two to Wong. Left it high. At ninety eight. Kimbrell has been nothing short of sensational. He leads all major league relievers in strikeouts per nine innings. Leads the American League in saves. Fly ball routine play for Benintendi. Two up and two down in the ninth. And Adams being announced as the number nine hitter and maybe the last man to swing here tonight at Bush Stadium. This would be a very nice way to begin an important trip for the Red Sox. Heading out west after this Jerry but to start in St. Louis against a very good team. Yeah a team that's been playing very well. Cardinals have won eight out of ten. He snaps that one in there for strike one. Red Sox getting some power tonight getting solid pitching. They played very good defense. We had no shot on that one to count 0 2. Red Sox fans preparing for a moment of victory. They are one strike away. Kimbrell with the 0 2. He blows him away at 99. And the Red Sox win it 6 3. Well that was a complete victory in many ways for the Red Sox. TC they take game one of this all important trip.